We're going to start a quick video on this vehicle. It's a 2006 uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, this thing's got about 130,000 miles on it. Uh, you can probably see that the motor's gone out of it. Just got through pulling the motor. We'll cover the reinstall. Um, the uninstall was way, way challenging. A um, lot of little issues with this vehicle that we are working to resolve. But uh, anyway, we got it out and it's in the garage now and ready to be rebuilt. So let's cover a little bit about what happened. Um, young man was driving it in uh, some bad weather, unrelated by the way. And uh, so at first he wasn't sure if this was, he thought it might be related to the weather and the high water that he was dealing with, but in fact, it doesn't look like it is. Um, anyway, it just died on him. He uh, got it home and it hadn't run since. So we, uh, they did a number of things to it initially, you know, general kind of stuff, tune-ups and uh, they checked uh, ignition coils and replaced ignition coils and did a bunch of little things like that. And uh, I went over and we did a quick compression test and we found out that uh, I think it'd be cylinder number five, uh, basically had zero compression. The interesting thing about the compression measurement was I have never done a compression measurement and I've got some deflection on the gauge, some measurement, even if it bled off very quickly, uh, such as a stuck valve or something would bleed off quickly. but. Usually you'll see some kind of a bump. This one actually had no measurement on the gauge at all. I really thought I was doing it wrong, but uh, no, it turns out I wasn't. So let's go in there and look at the motor. So here's the motor. Um, you don't have to strip this motor down to put it, to take it out uh, for a couple of reasons we found it easier. One, we wanted to do a little exploration to uh, see what we were dealing with before we got too far into this. and. Uh, we found a lot of things, more than a few things, broken uh, on this motor. Begin here in the front, the timing system. Um, there's timing shoes, or excuse me, there's uh, tensioner shoes that run uh, up and down both sides to hold tension on these side chains that go up to the head. Uh, those uh, those tensioners were broken, and so there wasn't uh, much tension on the chain, but. Uh, yeah, wasn't a train wreck, just wasn't particularly good. Another interesting finding here, let me see if I can get it where you can see. Hopefully you can see this. You'll notice this little gear right here. It's flopping about quite a bit. That gear is supposed to have a bolt in the center of it. That goes into the, the uh, ballast shaft that runs through this block. Um, I, I failed to tell you, I guess, it's a 3.7 liter um, V6. <clears throat> out of a Jeep, it's uh, 2006, so I mean, it covers Jeep, Dodge, Chrysler. And uh, so this little guy, uh, the bolt's gone out of the middle of it. Um, full well expecting that uh, it made its way down here into the oil pan, so I suspect we'll find it as we strip the motor off. But uh, that's not a good thing. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm assuming that I can put that all back together. Let's just, we'll see when we get there. Um, <clears throat> So the timing system, the counter-rotating balance shaft, all a little messed up, but probably the, well, certainly the bigger issue. Uh, cylinder five, if you look at the head for cylinder number five, you'll notice something missing, uh, the exhaust valve. Let me lay this down for us, get a better view. Okay, so here's the exhaust valves, intake valves on the various cylinders. This one, well, it's gone. We found it actually, it was in the cylinder. Um, You'll, you'll, if you can see in there, I'm not sure you can, there's a, you can see the shaft and uh, there we go, you can see it better now. And it literally sheared, it sheared on the shaft, it left a little stub about that long on the valve base and sheared off and the valve stem still down in there. So, uh, very strange, but uh, needless to say, these are uh, interference motors, so it'll take a lot less than dropping a valve into a cylinder to cause damage, so you be sure it caused damage. Here's the uh, cylinder in question, and uh, I'll show you better when the when the piston's out. But it's in a bad way. But because the entire valve had broken off, it wasn't just dropped, stuck open, something like that. Um, it showed zero compression. 
did not even move the needle when we turned it over. Also made a pretty bad ticking noise, needless to say. So there you go. Is it rebuildable? We don't know yet. Certainly the piston wouldn't be reused anyway. But I have some concerns about the, the actual cylinder. Uh, it's pretty roughed up from that valve thrashing about in there. But uh, I think it's, I think it's uh, redoable. Probably have to get it bored over. I don't know. I'm going to hopefully do as little as I have to. Ten thousandths, maybe twenty. Let the machine shop decide that. So the goal for now is to get this thing torn down and get the uh, get the block uh, ready to go out hopefully in the morning. Uh, you'll notice here's our stereo knock sensors mounted to the block. And, uh, and we're going to start ripping out this timing system, rip out this uh, oil pressure or this oil filter uh, casing that's on there. Pull out. We've already pulled out the uh, the uh, temperature sending unit. We'll pull out the oil pressure sending unit. Take out the crankcase, uh, the crankshaft position sensor, and uh, rip the timing system oil pump. Get all that off before we start breaking into the bottom end. So I'll get right back with you. Well, we're going to start the disassembly. Uh, first things first. I'm going to take off the the knock sensors, stereo knock sensors, one to the side, and we'll just bag and tag those, and get that out of our way. Then uh, loosened up this little bunch of the bolts here on the front, to give all the noise in the background. It's laundry day here. So I've taken out the primary bolt here out of the center, uh, out of the idler shaft, idler, idler pulley, and I've taken out the uh, primary bolt here. Uh, we'll take this a few ways. Uh, get my tools. The, uh, to take this off, you basically going to pull this tensioner at the same time. This tensioner also, uh, part of the mounting bolt for this tensioner, also mount the oil pump. So. And we'll bag these as we go. Get a few 10 millimeters down here, take them out. As I said, these are very long because they also serve to hold the oil pump onto the motor. I'll assume that once this is free, that the uh, this uh, idle pulley and primary chain will come off of there, as well as this uh, gear on the crankshaft. It'll slide forward. It's keyed with a Woodruff key, so no worry about timing of any kind. So the primary tensioner is dropped and that loosens the chain. Now we can begin to manipulate some things, I hope. So the entire gear system is coming forward on us here, which is okay. Soon we're going to put a lap full of stuff here. this off and get right back to you. <laughs> Alright, well we managed to get the timing system out. I just had to get a had to get a little dead blow hammer here back on that bottom uh, gear to get it to move a little bit. So we've taken out uh, the idler pulley primary or the idler gears, primary gears, all the chains, 
the tensioner. So there's a tensioner. These are hydraulic tensioners up here. The hydraulic tensioner up here. The one up here. This is for the uh, left side end. This is for the right side end. Um, and I went ahead and pulled the pickup two bolt. And went ahead and pulled the oil pump off. I can do that anytime. So front end's stripped out with the exception of the ballast shaft, which uh, we'll get to that. I need to find the bolt that goes in it if possible to make it easier to take out. Uh, we can do that uh, another time once we, hopefully once we find the bolt. Now there's a bunch of pieces and parts. Here's some broken um, tensioner pieces for the side chains going up to the heads. I suspect when we get further down, we'll see some more parts uh, that have fallen out of this crazy timing area. So anyway, next thing's next. We're going to go ahead and uh, pull the oil pan. Well, I'm going to pull this uh, cover from around the oil filter and the uh, oil pressure sitting unit. Then I'm going to pull the oil pan. I'm going to pull the oil pan within this orientation uh, in hopes of not making too big a mess. I drained the oil, but it's got plenty of oil in it. So on with that. Well, once I got the front end stripped out, I uh, just went ahead and dropped the oil pan. Dropped the oil pan with the engine in the upright position uh, just to minimize the amount of oil we had going everywhere. Uh, very interesting result. If <coughs> uh, you can see it, I hope you can. There's a whole lot of stuff in this oil pan. Um, mostly uh, here, these are various plastic parts from the uh, broken, excuse me, from the broken uh, tensioner system and then I hope this I'm guessing this is the bolt that went in the counter rotating balance shaft so one of the challenges here is uh, this oil pan gasket was stuck pretty firmly to the oil pan so I kind of had to get a screwdriver in between them a little worried about whether or not that's going to reseal that's part of the windage tray uh, but we'll We'll check that out. We'll work it out. Windage trail come off in a minute. Now that I've got the oil pan off, and go ahead and rotate the motor and start stripping apart the bottom end of the motor. So we've taken off the old pickup tube. It mounts on these two studs here. Um, and of course, then that frees up the windage tray. Before we go any further, though, something of note on the windage tray is this. This does not look quite right, does it? So something, something is torn up the windage tray. I can tell you what it is, but I will link, wait and discover it together here in a minute. So once I pulled off the windage tray, I very quickly realized that number five piston, the one that we said had the valve dropped in it, had the beat up piston on the inside, that looks something like this. Uh, this isn't all the pieces. Some of them, I think, are in the oil pan here, but this is the biggest chunks. Um, there's part of the rod there. It's part of the rod here. And, of course, then there's the rod journal. Wow. All I can say about that, um, I guess it's kind of a bless, blessing in disguise. Because the rod broke, it stopped piston travel. And so the piston didn't run up and down with the valve in it. Uh, for too long, which probably saved the bore of the cylinder. We'll see. So we're going to go ahead and tear the bottom end of this thing, rest the way down, pull out all six pistons, take out the, take off the, uh, the bed plate, and get this thing ready to go to shop. In the meantime, we're going to start shopping for, uh, for a new windage tray, for a new rod, and also we're going to have to shop for a new counter rotating balance shaft because this one um, with this gear having come off of it it uh, it tore up the front end of this thing so a few more parts than we thought but so far still looks rebuildable with minimal impact we shall see so we're gonna make the final segment in uh, this destruction video uh, we're ready to go to the machine shop I'm gonna carry the block bed plate and crank um, for a couple reasons the uh, the mains on the crank are a little bit rough let's see if we can see them here They're just a little bit rough uh, probably because of metal fines in the oil for the short time it ran 
or was turned over after it broke um, <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and carry the whole thing over there and let them take a look at it and see what can be done if you look at the mains uh, you'll see they're not terribly worn but they are pitted and there's a few scratches so uh, I'm a little concerned about the crank but uh, hope that they can polish that out um, this is just the bed plate bolts there in that bag in case they need to stick that part back together so we got the pistons out got the crank out got the bed plate off bed plates pretty easy to get off uh, it's just got a whole series of bolts it's got your main bolts here along with each at each journal and then it's just got a series of bolts here on the outside and uh, then you just have to pry it carefully pry it um, up off the block remember this is an RTV sealed surface um, here on the bottom of the block and then of course on the bottom of the bed plate so you don't want to scratch that up tear it up it's be hard to get a seal so we're looking good I think it's rebuildable still to be determined not going to take the heads in until I get some feedback on the block uh, don't want to rebuild the heads for it costs quite a bit more to rebuild than the block anyway so when the block uh, passes muster uh, or they tell me it's going to pass muster then I'll then I'll take the heads in get them started all right well come back on the reassembly video too thank you